Welcome to Bible 180, Second Sammy. David immediately begins ruling Judah upon Saul's death, but it takes six more years for the northern tribes to ask him to be their king as well. This, however, gives Israel stability and allows them to worship the Lord their God without interference. David makes Jerusalem his capital after an impressive victory over the Jebusites there. All of Israel rejoices that the Ark of the Covenant moves into Jerusalem. Israel is secure enough for God to move in more permanently. But Michal, Saul's daughter, and David's wife despises David for dancing so enthusiastically, saying it was unkingly. David responds, I'll become even more undignified than this because Yahweh is the true king and he deserves all the glory and power and praise I can give him. All other things matter little when compared to God and all his benefits to me. Since David has a palace built for him, he starts planning to build a temple for the Lord. And the Lord's like, you built me a temple? Get it straight. I built you up, and you don't have my permission to build me a house. Instead, it will be the son of David who will build up an eternal house and heritage. David says, you're right, and props on building up your people so awesomely. And the Lord does indeed build David's house. David spares Mehibosheth, who was crippled, and a son of Saul. He's the last descendant from Saul's family and therefore a potential threat to David. But David does not ex exile or kill him, but rather gives him a place at the royal table. David steals the married woman Bathsheba and orchestrates the death of her husband. The prophet Nathan comes and tells a parable about a ewe lamb to tell David, ewe sinned. I made you the king, gave you victories, and blessed you in every way possible, and you despised the Lord with your wickedness. God spares David's life and line, but now promises that David will get a taste of his own medicine. Enter Absalom. David's son Absalom is outraged that David does nothing when Absalom's sister is taken advantage of by another son of David. Absalom's anger turns into opportunism as he beguiles the people and leads a rebellion against David. David flees Jerusalem, but eventually the Lord returns David to the throne. Absalom is defeated although David mourns his son's death. Another mistake David makes is taking a census of all his troops, which demonstrates that he's starting to trust in his own strength instead of the Lord's. However, David still gives God all the glory for his many victories, and the last words of David recall with confidence God's everlasting covenant with his house and line. David's mistakes highlight sin is at the highest levels. Even the best of the best sometimes betray God and others. But despite sin, treachery, and rebellion, God preserves David's kingdom and uses his anointed to rule God's people. Jesus, the true son of David, will one day be all the king that David was and more. One day he will restore not only the 12 tribes, but all nations through the same faith David displayed. He will truly build up an eternal house and kingdom, but it will not be a building made with human hands, but one through his body, through which God will eternally dwell with his people, protecting and preserving them forever.